TU100, My Digital Life, Sense and Sense Ability. In this video, we're going to look at how loops can be used in programs. We'll use the game Christmas Lumberjack to illustrate how you can use three types of loops in Sense to control the repetition of instructions. Loops can be used in many ways to move programs along and can be very useful ways of carrying out lots of instructions using relatively little code. Here are the three loops used in this program. I'm going to show how two of them can be used to do the same job and that is to control the timer. We're looking at some blocks inside the stage. The first type of repeat block repeats the instructions inside its jaws as many times as you enter here in the input box. Because I want the timer to count down one second at a time for 10 repetitions, I've put a 10 in the input box. The two instructions that we want repeated are wait one second and then change the value of the timer by minus one every repetition. When the green flag is clicked to start the program, the watcher displays the result of repeatedly subtracting one from the value in the variable timer. When the 10 repeats are complete, this script will stop. So often in programming there is more than one way of achieving the same result. We can use a different type of repeat block to make the timer work. The second loop uses the repeat until block. This repeat block is a little more sophisticated than the first repeat block in that it can use the value in the variable to dictate the number of repetitions that are carried out. Inside the JAWS, we'll put the same two instructions that we put inside the other repeat block. As we saw in the video about variables, when the green flag is clicked, the loop repeatedly asks if the timer is at zero. If it isn't, it tells the script to wait one second and then take one away from whatever the number is that's in the variable timer. If the variable holds zero, then no more repetitions take place and the script stops. The third type of repeat block is the forever block. I'm going to copy this block across to a sprite I've made called Snow by dragging the block over to the sprite icon. Now when I select the Snow sprite I can see the copied forever block. You can of course just drag this block straight to the sprite from the palette but I just wanted to show you how convenient it can be to drag copy blocks from one sprite to another. I'm going to add the green flag hat block and in the jaws of the forever block I'm going to place these two instructions. The first is the control block wait set to 0.2 of a second and from the looks palette a next costume block. If we look at this sprite's costumes you can see that it has three costumes. These are just random blobs of white on a transparent background. It's three copies of more or less the same sprite that I've rotated and flipped two copies of to produce three snow costumes. Now when I run the program, the script tells the sprite to change to one of its three costumes every 0.2 of a second, producing a reasonable appearance of snowing over the top of our forest scene. There are neater ways of achieving the look of snowing using scrolling and we may well look at how to achieve this in an upcoming video but in the meantime bye for now.